creeps, it's Cameron again and welcome back to my channel where I talk about books, movies, writing, and all things spooky. On today's episode of Library Macabre, I'm just going to be doing a book haul showing you some of the horror titles that I bought over the past couple of weeks. Just yesterday, I went back to my favorite used bookstore. It's the one that I've told you guys about several times on this channel in previous videos. Uh, they always have a ton of very beautiful uh, horror paperbacks. It's where the majority of my paperback collection has come from. And every single time I go there, I walk out with a humongous stack of books. So yesterday was no exception. So first up, I found all three books in the Books of the Undead trilogy by Rick Myers. This is book one. It's called Fear Itself. Book two, which is called Living Hell and book three, which is called Worst Nightmare. From what I've heard, this trilogy is very much like um, that old 70s horror film called Zombie, the one directed by Lucia Fulci. And I can tell from the cover art that these books are very much uh, kind of like a nod to those uh, Italian zombie films. These are extremely rare, and I was absolutely shocked to find these, especially in this condition. I mean, look how new these look. They look brand new. They've never been read. Um, there's nothing wrong with these things. They're perfect. So. I got very, very excited when I found these. So uh, now I have all three books in that trilogy. I also found a pinnacle title. This one is called Blood Brothers by T. Lucian Wright. It's a vampire story. This one is called The Fates by Thomas Tessier, um, which was published in 1986. But it looks like it was originally published in 1978 in hardcover. Um, I have seen the original hardcover and I would like to get that at some point, but this paperback cover is amazing and I could not pass it up, especially in the condition that it's in. All of these books look pretty much brand new. Here I have The Sendai by William Woolfolk. This was featured in Paperbacks from Hell, so it's been getting a little bit of attention lately. This one is called The Sharing by John Simmons. Very spooky cover there. And this one is also called The Sharing, but it has nothing to do with that other one that I showed you just now. Uh, this one is by Martha Moffat and Cy Cook. <laughs> I saw Leon from Paperback Maniac haul this book recently, and he said, what are they sharing, a blood-soaked brownie? <laughs> does kind of look like a blood soaked brownie. This next one was published in 1979 by Pocket Books. It is called Demon Summer and it is by Elaine Booth Selig. And anything with a beachy cover like that I'm going to buy because it looks like a perfect summer read. The next one is also from 1979. It is called Satan Sublets by Jack Younger. And look at that cover. Just look at that. For $2.50 in this condition I just couldn't pass it up perfect. Um, can't wait to read this. This just looks crazy. This next one I have been looking for for a very long time. It is called The Cleanup and it is by John Skip and Craig Spector. Um, this almost completes my collection of the books that they co-authored together. Um, they were a duo of authors who did a lot of splatterpunk in the 80s. The only one that I'm missing now is Animals and then I will have all of their books that they collaborated on with each other. So one step closer. This next one is called The Colors of Hell by Michael Payne. Very shiny cover there. This next one here was published in 1978. It is called Nightwing. It is by Martin Cruz Smith. Next up, we have Apparitions by Noelle Scanlon and has a very uh, kind of H.P. Lovecraft style cover there. This one was published in 1986, uh, but was originally published in 1984 in Ireland. Um, and I believe it was published in hardcover. Um, but this paperback cover definitely wins if you compare the hardcover and this side by side. This honestly might be one of my favorite covers of this haul. It's just so colorful and just really pops. This next one is actually a nonfiction title and it is called Lust for Blood by Olga Hoyt. Um, and it is basically like, uh, true accounts of vampires and vampire sightings and things, uh, from what I read on the back. Um, I just thought it looked cool. And there's also some, like photos in the middle there from movies and stuff so just thought it looked interesting okay this one also has a really cool cover so this might be my favorite it is called tarot town and it is by bruce jones it's from leisure i love that cover uh, i like the autumn colors it just looks very cool this one is considered kind of a modern classic by a lot of readers it is called cast a cold eye by alan ryan I've never read it, but I've just heard amazing things about it. Okay, this one might also be my favorite cover. It is called The Sucking Pit by Guy and Smith. I have been wanting to get uh, some of Guy and Smith's original UK uh, editions, and I found this one at the bookstore. I was very, very shocked. Uh, it's in perfect shape. 
Got it for two fifty. All right. Now we have the Hell Candidate by Thomas Luke, who is also known as Graham Masterton. So very happy to add this to my Graham Masterton collection. Here is the Animal Hour by Andrew Clavin. It's kind of a Halloween story from what I've read on the back. Here is The Sister by Elliston Trevor, which is a sequel to his book called The Sibling, which I have not found yet, but I'm trying to locate a copy. <laughs> All right, so we have The Fair Rules of Evil by David C. Smith. When I pulled this book off the shelf, I started laughing, so I knew I had to get it. Um, I don't know what it is about this cover. I just think it's so funny. And then I also found this chunky little volume while I was there. It is The Best New Horror, Volume 5, which is edited by Stephen Jones and Ramsey Campbell. I've been wanting to collect these as well, and my favorite bookstore has a ton of these, um, so I will definitely start buying them a little bit at a time as I go there. Um, I just thought this one looked cool, mostly because of the, the gargoyle with the bloody heart in his mouth. It just really appealed to me. Okay, so those are all for the horror paperbacks, and I also have quite a few hardcovers and newer books that I bought as well. I have accumulated quite a few from Cemetery Dance Publications, which is my favorite publisher. They do a lot of really nice editions. So this is a brand new one that they put out. It is called The Halloween Children, and it is by Brian James Freeman and Norman Prentiss. And this was a limited edition that they just put out. It is signed by the authors. I bought this from their website because I love Halloween, but uh, yeah, there's the pumpkins on the back, and then the inside, look at that, it's a cloth bound book, it's just beautiful. Another cemetery dance book is Toy Box by Al Antonio. I got this off of eBay for about $20, it is also signed right there by Al, and it is limited to 750 copies. This is another one by Al Antonio. it is called Moonbane and it is signed and limited to 1,500 copies. I got this one for $7 on eBay. Great deal. And this is one that I got from the same eBay seller. It is called Midnight Premiere. It is an anthology of horror stories, and it is signed and limited to 1,500 copies. I got this for $10, and this one was also from the same eBay seller, and I got it for $7. They had some great deals on their page, and I took advantage of it. Uh, this one is called Oblivion, and it is signed, of course, and limited to 1,000 copies. And this one also came from the same seller, though it's not a Cemetery Dance book. It is called A Taste for Blood, and it is another anthology. It is an anthology of vampire stories. It's very, very chunky. Um, I got this for, I think, like $5, and it has a signature sheet on the inside. Now it's time for a few pre-orders that I got in the mail. This one is called Resurrection High, a black comedy by John Bruel and Joe Sullivan. I have read um, this duo's other books like uh, Corpse Cold and uh, Carol for a Haunted Man and uh, another one called Her Morning Portrait. You've probably seen my reviews for a couple of those. I am very, very excited to read this one. It takes place in the 90s, which is the decade that I grew up in, and the synopsis describes it as a nostalgic, darkly comic story of a teenager finding a passion for life after an insurmountable loss. Next up is one that I bought directly from the author, and it is called Death Obsessed by Robert Essick. And the cover, <laughs> for one, is beautiful, it really uh, has that nice VHS 80s quality about it that I love. It reminds me very much of the uh, Faces of Death, um, which is, I believe, what this book is inspired by. So, very, very curious to read this. This next one is called The Reading Buddy by Bryce Gibson. This is one that's been out for a while, and it's been on my radar, but I decided to go ahead and bite the bullet and buy a copy. This is a throwback to all those 90s teen horror novels like uh, the Point Horror series and Fear Street. Um, and there's a bloody axe on the cover, so that definitely piqued my interest. Here I have another eBay find. It is called Final Girls by Riley Sager. Um, I got this for $9, brand new, and it is signed by the author. So I was very happy to finally get a copy of this. I've been hearing a lot about it lately. It came out in 2017. It got a lot of buzz, um, and I forgot to pick up a copy, so... I was happy I found a first edition on eBay for so cheap. This was another one that came as a recommendation from Leon at Paperback Mania. It is called Pumpkin Cinema, The Best Movies for Halloween. And it is basically just a coffee table book uh, going over some of the best movies that you can watch during the Halloween season. Um, there's a lot of great poster art in here. 
Here I have Goosebumps Monsters at Midnight, which is a graphic novel based off of the Goosebumps series by R.L. Stein. Um, this was coming out in single issues recently, and I was interested in reading it, but I wanted to have a hardcover, so I decided to wait. And sure enough, they released a nice hardcover with all of the issues inside. And I read this, and I thought it was okay. Um, it didn't really capture the goosebumps that I know and love very well. There were some things that I wasn't too crazy about, but it was fun. I read it in like 20 minutes, so it's a nice, cute little goosebumps comic book. So if you're interested in that, then there you go. All right, and I have a few magazines here. This one is the newest issue of The Creeps magazine. This is issue number 14. I love this magazine. It is a throwback to all of the great Warren comics, or sorry, Warren magazines from the 1970s and 80s. It is a great magazine. It's got great artwork, great stories. I read this and it was a really fun issue, so I highly recommend picking this up. And then I got the newest issue of Rue Morgue magazine featuring Hereditary on the cover there, which is a movie that I just saw in the theater. One of my favorite magazines of all time. It's very colorful and I just love it to death. I don't know what I would do without Rue Morgue. And then I have an issue of Scream magazine, which is out of the UK. I was contacted by Scream Magazine and they asked me if I wanted a free copy of this issue uh, just to take a look at it and see what I thought and I was like, of course. So uh, I got this in the mail and guys, it's beautiful. It's like, it says so on the cover here, it says the horror bible for horror fans and I definitely agree. So that is a handful of books that I got over the past month. I really hope you enjoyed this haul. Don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe and I will see you guys next time. Later, creeps.